back this noise for those who are in the building on today. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. So before we go any further, I'm saying to all of you who are out there watching online, gather your family, gather your friends, let them know the household of being church is on. We are in the building and God has a word on today. So we're going to pray. Amen. So Father, I thank you, Lord, for this day you allow us to see. Father, I thank you, God, for those who came and gathered on today, God. As you got to bless them right now, as you got to change right now in the name of Jesus, God, however they came in, I ask you, God, to let them leave out different, God, with a word from you, God, to change their hearts, to change their minds and their spirits, God. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to see this day, God. We thank you, Father, for another opportunity, God, to be a part of whatever it is you have prepared for us, for our future, God, for our destiny, God. So I ask you, God, to bless us, God, as we go forward, God, in your worship and your praise, as we acknowledge you, as we reference you, Father, Lord. So we give your name the glory, we give your name the honor, and we give your name the praise. If I can get some more claps, noises in here, the you are glad to be in the building. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in. Amen. So at this time, we're going to have our praise and worship. And I'm not going to tell you how you should praise and worship, but those who was with us with our uh, sister churches over the uh, last weekend, a weekend before that, you heard a little bit about what worship and praise is about. So at this time, we're going to draw our minds unto God and who we serve, who wakes us up uh, every day, who protects and watches over us. So I don't know if you want to do uh, break dance. So however, I want you to feel comfortable in how you praise and worship the Lord. Amen. So I just want to make you laugh just a little bit. So we're going to go for it with our praise and worship. So just join in, get in where you fit in. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And you can look here on the screen here. If you do not know the words, it's okay. As you keep coming back, those words you'll see them, you'll get it after a while being your spirit. You'll be rocking after the while in your car. You want to uh, get, download the music. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We speak that to you. Now, if you want to stomp your feet, clap your hands, lift your voice, come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let the glory of the Lord. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise. 
Another day to do it right again. Erase everything that's been gone. Is yesterday is gone. You can't take it back. This is it. This is the day right here that God is looking to see what we're going to do. But another opportunity is given unto us. So I encourage you on today. Don't leave the same way you came in. Don't pick up something that you brought in. Or you know, when you get back, it's going to let it sit there for a minute. We got to let that thing go. Um, then we can't have no room, no camp, no nothing. We're going to allow God and the Holy Spirit to operate in our lives from this day forward and going forward each day. It's a new fight, a new fight, a new fight, a new fight to keep your family, a new fight to keep your marriage, a new fight to keep your children, a new fight to keep your life. Amen? So we're going to do Christ. Amen? So at this time, Pastor Douglas will be coming forward with the word. Thank you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Come on, we give God praise. Hallelujah. 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 The song said, you make me happy. Yeah. You, weren't, you weren't talking to the person next to us. We were yes. talking to God, our Father. Yes. He makes us happy. How many are happy in Christ? Happiness in Christ doesn't depend on what's going on in your life. Okay. Happiness in Christ doesn't depend on your situation. When you understand that, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but that's where we're going today. When you understand what Christ has done for you, 
When you understand the ability he has given to you to live the abundant life, to live over and above what's going on, mm -hmm. then you're going to give him praise. Yeah. And you're going to give him all the glory and all the honor as through his name. Y'all might have heard the analogy of the glass of water. You know, a, a, a glass of water might be there and it might be half full and it depends on a person's perspective how they see it. Some people see the glass half empty. Some people see the glass half full. But what, what Jesus has done, he give, he's given us the ability to have a perspective that is even over both of those. We see it as a glass of water and it's, if, if we're thirsty, we drink it. And if we're not, if, it's, if we're not thirsty, we leave it as it is. He's given us the ability to see that we are over the glass of water and it's made for us. You don't have to view it as glass half full or glass half empty. It's what God made for me. He supplies our needs. He supplies our needs. We got we to know that. And he's with us despite what's going on, despite how I feel. Despite what they did, they said. He's with us. He never he promises never to leave us or to forsake us. And each day, if we can't praise God for anything, we can praise God for this. Each new day, he gives us new graces and mercies. Every single day, he gives us opportunity to begin again with him, to start over with him. Amen? That's a wonderful thing. For that, we should be able to give him glory. For that, we should be able to give him honor. For that, we should be able to give him praise. Yes. Amen. He said, he said, he said, he said, let everything that have breath yeah. praise the Lord. From what I can tell, everybody in here is breathing. Yeah. Nobody in here is, is hooked up to a ventilator. No. Everybody is breathing. Yeah. So that means that you, 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 you are required to give God a praise. Because, yes. because, even, even the young folks, you got to understand that the breath that's in your body belongs to God. He gives that to you. And all he asks is you to praise him and give him glory. I'm going to leave you alone. Maybe we're going to get into the word. I just want us to understand what is ours. What is ours. We have the ability to, we have the the, the ability to live above. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Amen? Amen. So today we're going to be coming out of John chapter 10, verse 1 through 10. That's what I'm going to be reading just for context. Amen? Amen. But verse 10 is going to be my focus verse. I want to take this time to welcome everybody who's here. Thank all of you, Household of Faith partners and visitors and uh, those who are watching through through uh, Facebook Live. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for taking this opportunity to join us. It means so much to us. We thank God for you. Amen. Amen. And we're here for no other reason but to give God the glory, honor, and praise. That's his name. Yes. When that song said, I could have been dead and gone. I could have I could have been crazy right then and there. Because I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't a, a, the, the baddest person in the street, right? But I did some dumb stuff. Right? I did some dumb stuff, man, with some dumb people. <laughs> and I could have been dead and gone. But God in his grace and mercy saw a fit to spare me. I thank him for saving me. Amen. Amen. I thank him for saving me. Alright, John, John chapter 10, verse 1 through 10. Everybody got it. I'm going to read it for you. It's what it says. It says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs in another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name. And he leads them out. When he has bought out all his own he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Y'all remember we preached on the, I shared the message of take it personal, and we were talking about the day, how David took it personal, how God did his savior, I mean God did his shepherd because of what he did. This is that same analogy, and Jesus is talking about us. 
how he protects his sheep, how he leads his sheep, how they follow him, and they won't follow anybody else because they know his voice. He's talking about us here. Amen. Then he says, a stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If any enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Jesus says in verse 10, my focus verse, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Verse 10, one more time. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Just for context. As I said, Jesus is talking about us. He's talking about he, him being the door that the sheep enter in. That's, that's him talking about salvation, how we come to God through him. Right? So, so we come to God through him. When he says, all who came before me are, were thieves and robbers, he was talking about the religious people of that day. The Pharisees and Sadducees who were trying to heap laws and, 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 and things on people to keep them from, from entering into the kingdom of God. Jesus called them thieves and robbers. Right? All who came before me were thieves and robbers. But then he says, my sheep don't listen to them. My sheep listen to me. We are the, those sheep. Right? He said, he said, and then they come in by me. So we're saved, right? We're saved because we've came in through Jesus. We believe on Jesus. We've confessed him as our Lord and Savior. Right? So, so, so he's talking about us. So after that, he said, they will go in and out and find pasture. That means you're free in Jesus to live a life that he's already prepared for you. Verse 10, he says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. He's talking about the devil, right? He comes to steal what God has already given you. He comes to, to, to kill he, he wants to kill you. He wants to stop you from living the life that God has given you. He wants to stop you from fulfill, fulfilling the purpose for which God has put you on the earth. And then Jesus said he ultimately wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy everything that God wants to do through you. But then he says this, but I came that, that they that they is, is everybody who's here who has believed on Jesus. He says, but I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus is talking about us. These are his words. Y'all heard it. It's not my words. I'm not reading anything that's not in the Bible. John 10, 10, Jesus says, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Jesus is God in the flesh, right? Jesus is God in the flesh. God cannot lie, right? Numbers, you don't have to turn there now. Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19, right? Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18. You can guys go there and check it after me. Both of these verses tell us that it's impossible for God to lie. So, Jesus, being God in the flesh, can't lie, right? The only thing, we know we say, we say God can do anything, right? The only thing, two things that God can't do. He can't fail, and he can't lie, right? God can't fail, and he can't lie. So I, I just want to challenge our, our, our paradigm, our, our way of thinking. Right? I want to challenge the way that we think. If Jesus said that he came 
so that we could experience abundant life. He said, I came that they may have life. That is those who believe in them, those who have confessed them as their Lord and Savior. More specifically, you and I, right? If he said that he came that we may experience abundant life, because he can't lie, he had to have made abundant life available, right? I don't know if that makes sense. If, if, if Jesus is God in the flesh and he can't lie, if he said, I came, that they who believe in me can experience abundant life, then he had to have made it available, right? Because he can't lie. My question is this. Why don't we experience this abundant life if he made it available? And I'm going to show you that he, he did make it available. But it's up to us whether or not we want to live it. My, my, my topic for today is more life. Jesus came so that you and I can experience more life. Not just regular existing from day to day doing the same thing, down and out, living according to what happens or how I feel. He came that we may live life above that. And it's available for me and available for you, right? So what I wish to accomplish with this message, as I said, is to challenge our paradigm, to ch challenge our way of thinking, right? I want to cause us to, to see what is right in front of our eyes, but we miss it because we're looking at the wrong things. I want to cause us to understand what we know, right? I want to cause us to understand what we know but don't participate in. See, there's a difference between understanding something and knowing something, right? No, you, you can know something but not understand it. Knowing simply means to hold the facts. You can know my name is Adonis but not understand me, right? To understand me, you have, you have, you have to have had uh, an interaction with me. You have to have had a, a, a relationship with me. Tina understands me. Right? And, 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 is, and is understanding me as we <laughs> go on. I'm a complex individual. Amen? So she, she, she's going to have to keep understanding me. But she does more than know me. Right? Because she understands me. She knows more than just facts about me. She's experienced me. Right? Understanding is, is active. Understanding is not just having the facts. It is activating the facts. Participating in the facts. So that's what I want us to, to understand what we say we know. I want to cause us to grasp what is ours. But we allow it to slip through our hands because we don't understand what we really have. What is that? The more life. Jesus came to give us the more life, right? He came to give us a life that is more. More than what we see. More than how we feel. More than what we eat. And if y'all remember what Jesus said in the scripture, it said the, the kingdom of God is, is more than eating and drinking, but power. Power. To live above what's happening. That's what it means to have the abundant life, as it says here in John 10.10. 10. It means to have a plentiful life. It means to have a rich life. An overflowing life. A life of more. The more life, I want you to understand this, the more life is a benefit of Jesus being our Lord and Savior. Even to the young folks, I want y'all to understand 
Because I wish I would have, I, I do wish that I would have come to know Jesus as a youth so I could have, would have participated in his lifestyle and avoided a whole bunch of stuff. Right? I want y'all to understand this even as, as young as your Lord. That, that Jesus being your Lord and Savior is a benefit to you. It gives you the ability to live over and above what, 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 what your friends who don't know him can live. When Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you have a grace on your life. That causes what you need to be provided. That causes those who, who try to come up against you to fail at what they do. To cause you to have joy beyond life circumstances. Hope that person is all right. <laughs> but, but see, but the more life is a benefit of Jesus being our Lord. Just like the benefits on your job. You get benefits on your job just because you work there. Right? More life is a benefit to us as Jesus being our Lord and Savior. And, and on your job, you may, you may have co-workers who don't use their benefits. Why don't they use their benefits? Most people don't use their benefits on their job for two reasons. They don't know what benefits are available to them, so they don't use them. And then two, they don't understand how their benefits work. Well, today, we want to try to show us what our benefits in Jesus are and how they work for us, right? Because it's for these same reasons I find that we don't experience the more life that Jesus came us, I mean, Jesus came to give us. We don't know what's available to us, and we don't know how it works for us. Amen? So these are our, our two points of discussion. Jesus came to give us, keep hearing me say this, because I wanted to get it through our mind. Jesus came to give us more life, and today we are going to find out what that means so that we can begin to experience. Amen? We're not going to leave here the same way that we came in. Amen? Whatever went wrong and shook us this morning, if you grasp this word, when you leave here, the same thing won't shake you again. Yeah. Because you'll find out that you, you have the availability, the, the ability to live beyond what happens. What is this abundant life that Jesus has made available to us? Well, let's begin by looking at the words. He said, I came that they may have abundant life. Let's look at what these words are. Me. See, our English, in our English, we kind of lose what the meaning of these words actually are. Because these words were, 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 were uh, 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 translated from, from the Keon Greek. Right? Most of the New Testament in our Bible was, was translated from, from the Keon Greek. Right? And the reason it was translated because the Keon Greek was the, was the common language of the people at that time. Right? So our translators tra translated uh, the, the key on Greek into English. So, but we lose the essence of what these words, we lose some of the essence of what these words actually mean. So when we think of abundant, I try to make it as plain and simple as I could. I, when we think of something abundant, we think of more. Right? But, it, but it's super, that word supersedes even more. The word abundantly it comes from this Greek word, this key on Greek word, which is parison. P-E-R-I-S-S-O-N. Parison, right? And what parison refers to is, is eternal life. You know, Jesus came to give us eternal life, right? But he came to give us even more than that. He came to give us life in its fullness in every area. Amen? So, so, so you go look at that word up, parison, P-E-R-I-S-S-O-N. It means eternal life in its fullness. Right? Jesus, we know, secured eternal life for us when he died, rose, and ascended to the Father. And, and we believed on him. So eternal life became ours. Amen? 
The parison also refers to having the things that, that are needful to make our life infinitely blessed and happy. A reminder of the scripture that says that Jesus has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness, watch this, in our knowledge of him. When you know what he's done for you, then you'll realize that you have everything that you need already for life and to live the life that God has given to you for life and godliness. Parison, it, it means exceeding in measure. It means exceeding in rank, exceeding in need. It means over and above. It means more than what is necessary. That's crazy. More than what's necessary. It, 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 it means super added. It means what you what will, what will be added to your life will, will, will be over and above what you need. You remember that Jesus said, he said, uh, uh, um, if you seek first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, all these things will be added to you. Right? Parison means supremely something further, more, more, it, 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 it says more, and then much more. More than superior, extraordinary. The last definition says, Surpassing uncommon. That's what Jesus has made available to us. Surpassing uncommon. So I went to the, to the next level of definitions. It said it means preeminence. Now we know Jesus, the Bible uses preeminence when it comes to Jesus. If we can understand, and you'll probably see that at the end of this, Jesus ultimately gave us his life on earth. What does that mean? We have the ability to walk on earth as Jesus walked on earth. That might be too much for somebody. Person means that we have an advantage. We have a life that is more remarkable, more excellent. That's what abundant means in the, in the Greek word it was translated from. Hope you can see what God has intended for us. Now, now life. The word life in the key old Greek came from a word which is zoen, Z O O E N. And zoen comes from a word called Zoe. You might be familiar with Zoe, right? Zoe refers to life that comes from above, the kind of life that comes from above. That's the kind of life that God intends for us to live. That's the kind of life that Jesus came to give us. A life that comes from above and a life that is lived above. Circumstances and situations. Maybe this will help you understand this. There are other Greek words that refer to life. Right? There, 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 uh, there's a Greek word Bios, B-I-O-S, is where we get words like biology, right? And we know that biology talks about physical life, right? Then, then, then there's another Greek word that refers to life. This word is pushe, pushke, and it's P-S-U-C-H-E, right? And this word means the lower level of life. The lower level of life. And this Pusha life is the life that separates people from living the life that God would have them to live. The Pusha life, it, it refers to the life that separates us from living the kind of life that God wants us to live. That life that God wants us to live is the Zoe life. The life that is above. Hope you're getting it. 
Jesus came to give us the highest form of life. The life that is over above bios, the life that is over and above Pouche, he came to give us the Zoe life. A life that is exceeding. A life that is supreme. A life that is surpassing. He came to give you a remarkable life. I'm trying to get you to see, Jesus came to give us more life. Our life is supposed to be one that is enjoyed. Enjoyed. Our life is supposed to be one that is not lived depending upon circumstances, depending upon situations, depending upon feelings. Y'all heard me say it before. Feelings are for us to express, but not to tell us how to live. I'm going to move on. Jesus said this. He said, he said, he came to give us rest. Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30, he says this. He said, he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Rest is a part of the more life that Jesus came to give us. Rest. A lot of us need physical rest. But Jesus came to give us physical rest and rest for our minds, rest for our souls. He said, whoever comes to me, I will give them rest. This is what it means to have rest. It means to, to, to be provided with refreshment. It means to be provided with rejuvenation. How many need to be refreshed today? How many need to be rejuvenated today? It's available to you. Yeah. You are, we are supposed to live lives of, of refreshment and rejuvenation daily. But we don't. Because we don't know what is ours. What is the requirement that we receive this rest? Jesus says the only requirement is that you come to me. But when we say we've come to him, right? Why don't we experience the rest? Because again, he, he's not a man who should lie. He's not the son of man that he should repent. If he said he gives rest, then he has to have done it, right? But do we take him at his word? And do we and do we experience, do we, do we take what he made available to us and walk in it? See, Jesus says this. You can come to me and I'll give you rest. Because then you understand that you can come to me with everything. You can come to me with your problems. You can come to me with your issues. You can come to me with your worries. You can come to me with your needs. And then you can leave them there. And take my rest. But we don't do that. See, we say we come to him with our needs, with our worries, with our issues. But then when we leave, we take them right back with us. And that's why we don't experience the rest that he would have us to experience. This is what Jesus said in the rest of that verse, 29 through 30. He says, he says, take my yoke. Yes. He says, take my yoke upon you. Don't stop there. Then he says, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls, yes. for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Yes. Jesus says, once you come to me, mm -hmm. the next thing you got to do is learn about me. Yes. Well, he says, first he says, take my yoke upon you, then learn of me. I don't know if anybody knows what, a, what, what this yoke 
represents. But but a yoke, I think they probably still use them today, I'm not sure. But back in the day, during this time, a yoke was a was a wooden beam that was fastened over the necks of two animals. And, and, and this yoke attached the two animals together, but it also attached them to, to a cart or a plow that they were pulling. And what it did was it enabled them to pull the cart together. It took the burden off of just one animal and it, and it, and it, and it, and it, and it, and it uh, so what I'm looking for, it, it distributed evenly between the both of them. But it's different with Jesus. He says, take my yoke upon you. He's saying, attach yourself to me. Yes. Like the animals were attached to each other. He's saying, attach yourself to me. But this is the thing. My yoke is easy. Yes. My yoke is light. So what he's saying is, when you attach yourself to me, I'm going to take the full load. Yes. I'm going to take the burden. And then... I'm going to help you pull this cart. This heavy load that you think you have to carry. So it's all on me. Is what he's saying. And then you rest walking beside me. That's the analogy of what Jesus is saying right there. Then he says, after you Take my, 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 my light and easy yoke. He says, learn about me. Yes. Learn about me. We got to learn the truths that Jesus wants to teach us. That's why we don't experience this rest because we've taken on the teachings of the world that tell us God won't give you more than you can. God will give you more than you can bear. It's not true. He, he wouldn't have said it if he didn't mean it. What we do is we take on more than we can bear. Jesus says, learn of me. Learn of my ways. Learn of what I've made available to you so that you can live it and begin to operate in it. We read the word of God so that we can say, well, not you particularly, but people. Yeah, I've read the word of God. I got my word in the day. But are we really it to learn of him and then live it out? Yeah, right. We got to learn of him because he knows. He knows what it's like to live in an ungodly world. Right? He knows what it, what it is to, to live in a body that acts up. Jesus was tempted in all points as we are, but the Bible says, without sin. So he knows every situation that life brings to us. And I allow my mind to run with that. Because every situation that I could be faced with, you could be faced with, he faced it. And if he didn't face it when he was living, understand this. He faced it on the cross. Because all sin was put on him at that point. All, everything that you can think of was placed on him at that point. So it wasn't him, understand this, it wasn't him being nailed to the cross that killed him. First of all, he laid down his life but it was, it was the, the sin, all the sin, all the sin of mankind being placed on him. Every iota of sin that had been known from Adam to that point and, what was, and from, his, from that point with him on the cross until the world end. All that sin placed on him. And the ways of sin is what? Death. Death. So he laid down his life so that we could have victory over whatever life we try to bring our way. So he knows what it is to live 
In an ungodly world, he knows what it is to have a body that acts up. He knows what it is to have a soul that is subject to mood swings. He knows what it is to wake up on the wrong side of the bed. Just think about that, right? He knows what it is to have temptations. He knows what it is to have the tendency to judge every situation wrongly like we do. To judge people wrongly like we do. He knows what it is. He knows what it is to, to feel a certain way and, to, and then to act according to that. Knowing it's wrong. He knows that. But he didn't give in to it. So he says, learn of me. And when we learn, when we learn of Jesus, what we'll find is that he's given us the ability to rise above it. He's given us the ability to rise above it in and through him and our knowledge of him. Jesus says in John 8, 32, he says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. When you know what I've done for you, what I've made available to you, that will free you from the burdens of this life and allow you to live more. Can you see that? The, the, the world's teachings, right? What the world teaches us is meant to place us in bondage. The thinkers that to, to tell us that we got to carry loads and we got a right to retaliate and we got a right to feel this kind of way places us in bondage. What do I mean? It stops us from living according to the way that God wants us to live. So we don't have to forgive. I got a right to hold a, a grudge. But the grudge is only hurting you. Because that person went on with their life. And you're bound. The behaviors of the world are meant to keep us in bondage. Living according to how we feel. That's not what God has for us. But these are the, the truth that Jesus teaches us. Allows us to experience rest. What was that again? Refreshment. Rejuvenation. When I, when I apply what he teaches. And then ultimately the truth that Jesus wants us to understand is that he, he is the truth that sets us free from everything. You are not required to live a life that pleases anybody, that pleases anyone up else except him. That should free you. The only requirements that are on our life is to live a way that it, in a way that pleases God. That's why Jesus was free. He said, I do what I see my father do. I live my life until my father. He didn't have all of the cares that we carry around. Because he understood his life was to live unto one. Rest. Jesus wants us to have rest. Yes. Rest from mental anxiety. Yes. Rest from frustration. Yes. Rest is a part of the more life that Jesus did give us. Rest is yours. In the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. The Apostle Peter, he, he said that he said, he said, repent and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out and that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. The, the, the context of that verse is this. There was a man, you go back and read that, 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 that chapter, Acts 3. There was a man who, who was born crippled from birth, right? And this man was placed at the temple gate every day to ask for money. You probably know the story. 
But one day Peter and John were going to the temple when this man said to them, he said, you have any money, silver and gold is what they had back then. Jesus said, silver and gold I do not have, but such as I have, I give to you. He said, rise and walk in the name of Jesus Christ. He didn't have money. That should speak something to us. Because our society, our society tells us that we have to have a lot of money in order to be happy. But the secret they don't tell you is most of the people that have a lot of money are miserable. Because they trust in it and then they're afraid of losing it. And then when they lose it, they don't know what to do. But our life is supposed to be, be lived above what we have. But anyway, Jesus said, I mean, Peter said, I don't have silver and gold, but what I have, I'm going to give to you. And I have the power of God on my life. You, I'm giving it to you. Rise and walk in the name of Jesus. So this man was healed by the Holy Spirit because that power came from the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit worked through Peter. But after that man was healed, the, the story says that he entered into the temple with, with Peter and with John. And the people who saw this man they saw him every day lie at the gate, asking for money. Now they saw he was healed, and they were amazed. Peter knew that these people were amazed, and they wondered, how is this man healed? He had crippled legs, right? How was he healed? He tells them this man was healed through faith, in the name of Jesus Christ. Then he told them, you got to repent. You got to have a change in your heart. You got to have a change in your mind. Right? He said, then you have to acknowledge your sin and confess that you have the wrong mindset concerning Jesus. That's what it means to repent. Right? Then he said this to them. He said, if you repent, you will be converted and conversion means to be turned to God by belief in Jesus as the Messiah. So this is what he says. He says to them, if you repent, you will be converted to God. Your sins will be forgiven. That means totally blotted out, right? Total removal of the record. Total removal of the charge. Every trace of, the account, of your account cleansed. And then he says this. And then you will be able to experience times of refreshing. Times of refreshing is supposed to be hours after we've made Jesus our Lord and Savior. What does refreshing mean according to the Bible? It means divine peace and joy. Times of refreshing out of the presence or from the presence of the Lord. Meaning that Divine peace and joy comes from coming from Jesus to us. Our lives are supposed to be lives that have peace, overflowing peace yes. and joy. That 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 opportunity is is yours. That opportunity is mine to experience. Divine peace and joy from Jesus himself. What, what does that mean to us? That means we don't have to live a life of confusion. I can have peace. I don't have to live a life that's conflicted. I can have peace. I don't have to live in misery or despair. Joy is ours. If we would only understand that's ours. Jesus came to give us more life. He did this by his spirit. We understand that the Holy Spirit is living inside of us. The spirit of the living God is inside of each and every one of, one of us. And this ability to live this more life is in you, in us. Yes. But we don't realize it 
we lean to the flesh, this outward, this pouche life, lower level of living that God doesn't want you to live by the standards of this world. In John 7, 37, 39, not going to be too much longer. John 37, 39, Jesus says this. He said, on the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood, out and cried, stood up and cried out. He said, if any thirst after me, let him come and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. He said this about the spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as of yet, the spirit had not been given. Because Jesus was not yet glorified. On, on the final day of the feast, this, this is the context of what we, I just read. On, on the final day of the feast, the eighth, eighth day, Jesus stood up and he proclaimed with a loud voice that those who believe in me out of their heart, out of their belly, would flow rivers of living water. We know Jesus wasn't talking about literal water coming out of our mouth, right? But he was talking about his spirit that would be inside of us, indwelling us and causing us to live this abundant life. Holy Spirit came after Jesus was crucified, after Jesus was raised from the dead, after Jesus ascended to the right hand of the Father, on the day of Pentecost, this promised Holy Spirit came on the disciples in the upper room and came on anybody that believed on Jesus. We too, when we believed on Jesus, God put in us His Spirit. His Spirit is what is keeping you and me until the day when Jesus comes. The Bible said that the Holy Spirit is our seal. Until the day of redemption. That's why we can't lose our salvation because we are sealed. But not only did he seal us until the day of redemption, he's in us to help us to live a life that is beyond yeah. what we experience. Yeah. A, life, a life that is beyond the natural. When you receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, in your heart, in your innermost being, rivers of living water were placed in you. Waters from Him. But we don't understand what, is that, what that means. What does that mean? It means that these rivers of living water are waters of refreshment for us. When I feel like giving in, when I feel like throwing in a towel, when I feel like giving up, Holy Spirit refreshes me. These rivers of living water are, are large. It says rivers because when we, when we see rivers, we see large bodies of water. That means that he provides refreshment large and liberal for us. Rivers of living water also refer to constant blessings and fruit bearing. He's constantly bearing up in us, bringing up in us the graces, the characteristics that are of God himself. Fruit. Fruit means the graces of God. Fruit means the spiritual qualities and influences, the qualities of character of God coming upon us in our lives as a result of his operation on our soul. The fruits that Holy Spirit is, provide, or is, is, is providing in us or working in us are found in Galatians 5, 22, 23. We've been here before. It says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against these things there is no law, which means there's no limit to how these things can operate in you. There's no law 
Nothing can come against them. These are the things that help you experience the abundant life that God has made available to you. See, we think of love. I'm gonna move real quickly. We think of love as a as a as a as a as a butterfly feeling. When I love, it feels good. But no, genuine love is not fake. It's not phony. This is what God says love is. God says love is self-sacrifice for the benefit of those you love. God so loved the world that he gave his son for you. Sacrificed because he loved you. So if we, if we say we're to operate in love, then I'm not living according to how I feel. Or at least I shouldn't be. When I love that way, I'm living above the feelings of worldly love. Mm -hmm. Joy. It, it said, joy is an inner thing. See, 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 we happiness according to the world standard. And I gotta make these uh, distinctions so that we can see what God has made available to us. Happiness according to the world standards depending upon what's going on. But joy is inside you. It's not dependent upon circumstances. It is dependent upon only this. God's sovereign control of everything. Because I know that God is in control. I know that all things are working for my good. I'm talking about a mature mindset as a believer. He says peace. Peace is tranquility of mind. I don't have to be perplexed. You don't have to be perplexed. You don't have to be worried or frustrated. He gives us tranquility of mind first because we got a right relationship with God. So because my relationship is right with God, I don't have to worry. I don't have to fear. And then number two, I get tranquility because I have a right relationship with people. My relationship with people got to be right for my relationship with, to God to be right. One thing we get twisted is we say, I'm going to tell my daddy. Well, he's my daddy too. You got to make it right with me before we go talk to him. Tranquility of mind. It's, it's the peace and calm and quiet and order that comes from a justified soul instead of doubts and fears. That's what God has given us. He's given us long suffering. What is going on stuff? I can remain quiet when I'm wrong. Why? Because I know God is working it out for me. We've seen that in Joseph. We've seen that in... Who else did we study? We just stay with Joseph. Stay with Joseph right there. But, but, but he, he, he endured ill treatment because he knew that God was working it out for him. Long suffering is patient endurance under ill treatment and without anger or revenge. I don't have to live by the standards of the world saying I got to get even. No, God's going to get even for me. See, we got to understand when God says vengeance is mine, he's not just talking about it. <laughs> Maybe we do a study on vengeance. When God says vengeance is mine, he's not just saying repay your enemies. I'm going to get them. He said I'm going to make it right with you. That's what vengeance means. It just means that God is going to punish the enemy, but also make it right with you. If we understand that, we ain't got to fight our battles. See, we got to understand. That's why, see, we, we, sometimes when we read the Bible, we look at those people as like weak. Like, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Because they had a better understanding of God than we did. Let's move. Goodness. Goodness is mildness of temper. It's a consideration even when I gotta discipline somebody. That's what that's what that's what gentleness is. Goodness, he's giving us goodness. Goodness is gracious giving. I give with no strings attached. We ain't gotta pay me back if I give to you. We ain't gotta duck and die, duck and die when you see me because you feel like <laughs> I'm oh, I want what I gave you back. No, goodness is the ability for me to do good to you even when you don't deserve it. That's what God gave to us. 
It's the ability to live beyond the standards of the world. Can you see that? Faithfulness. Faith. It's faithfulness in performing a promise. Carefulness is keep, in keeping what is committed to my trust. Ain't no betrayal in me. I don't betray my friends, my family, or those who are close to me. I'm faithful. He's not even... Faithful means I, I don't even disappoint the confidence of my employer. Because I'm a child of God, I do right on my job. You don't hear that. Meekness. Humility. That's me, that means not being harsh to others. Using the power or the authority that I have rightfully. Lastly, he gives us temperance, which means that we have mastery over our desires and impulses. We don't want to hear that. It's what God gave to us. He gave us the ability. Can y'all see this? He gave us the ability to live above. Yes. Flesh has no control over me. What people do and say has no control over me if I don't want it to. He's given me the ability to live abundantly. This is what it means to live abundantly. These are the, 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 the graces that Holy Spirit is developing in us. And once they're developed, they reveal the qualities, the, the, the divine character of God in me and you. And then they present actionable expressions of godliness. We do godliness to a lost and dying world because they need to see supernatural in the natural. That's, that's why God has given us abundant life so that, the, so that the world, those who don't believe in him can see his actions through us. Why do you think it says let your light shine before men so that they can see not you but me and glorify your Father in heaven. That's what the scripture says. So he, he does these things in us so that the world can see him do you. This is what it means to live abundant life, a life that is, that is beyond. Jesus gave us more life through the, through the elements and character of his spirit. We don't realize truly what Jesus has made available to us. It's in. We're going to go to our focus scripture real quick. In our focus scripture, Jesus said, be ready. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Yeah. I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. He said that he came so that we could have more life. Yes. I'm telling you that he gave it to us. He didn't lie. But this is what happens. We are more aware of the first part of his statement. He said the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. We're more aware of that then we are of the final part, where he says, I came to give you more life. We know all about the enemy. We know nothing about what God has made available to us. And that's why we can't live it. We don't know what's ours. We focus on the first part. We focus on what the thief does. The thief is the devil. We can easily recognize what he's doing. Listen to anybody talk. Oh, the devil is busy. He's doing this. He's doing that. He's doing this. What is God doing? Yeah. Yeah. What has God made available to you? Yeah. Are you living that? Yes, Lord. We're quick to focus on what the enemy is doing. And you don't have to because he's not important in our life. Mm -hmm. Do you know, and I hate when people do this, you're praying to God and then they start talking to the devil. You ever seen anybody do that? Praying to God. And then you stop and talk to his enemy? You understand that? How disrespectful that is to God? You're not supposed to be worried about him. If you focus on what God has made available to you, you won't even see what he is doing. People are surprised when I say, that way got no room in my life. Why? Because I barely mentioned, I, I hardly, Tina can tell you, I barely mentioned him. 
ever. Because my focus is not on him. Your focus is not to be on him. Yes. Your focus is, on, is, on, is supposed to be on what God has made available to you. Yes. Jesus said, if your eye is full of light, how bright is that light? That means if you see what he has made available to you, you'll be able to live it. Not worrying about that, right? So we easily give in to what the enemy does because we focus on him. We focus on the thief. We focus on him coming to steal, kill, and destroy. But if I build my life on the rock, yes. stand. Yes. Jesus says the house that is built on the rock will stand. The thief yes. can't get into the house. Yes. If we're building our house on the rock, he has no opportunity to get in to steal, kill, and destroy it. We have done the opposite of what Jesus said. He said, he said, learn of me. Yes. But we've learned of the thief. We've learned of the thief. Most people, if you talk to the average person today, ask them what's going on in their life, they'll probably tell you more bad than good. They're more aware of what the enemy is doing. And God could be knocking their socks off with blessing, but they don't focus on that. They focus on what the enemy is doing. We easily accept the lies of the thief. Easily. Whole time, God is through his spirit sending you encouragement from his word. You ain't taking none of that in. Enemy sending lies to your mind, you easily receive them. You're nothing, you can't do this, you can't do that, 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 whatever. Mm -hmm. Taking it in easy. Whole time, Holy Spirit trying to encourage you with what's yours. Mm -hmm. You pay it no attention. We allow him to steal our peace, our joy, our love. We allow him. We open the door. <laughs> we open the door for him to come in and kill our relationships. Come on in, D. Yeah. Who does that? In the natural, we got alarms and boat locks and all kind of stuff on our doors. But our heart, we need it wide open for him. And Jesus in his wisdom tells us to guard our heart. Yeah. With all diligence, because out of it flows the issues of life. Yeah. But we don't guard it. We leave it open so the thief can come on in and take everything. We allow him to come and destroy. And that's not God's will for us. His will is that we live life and it more abundantly. Jesus gave us more life. Yes. He gave us the ability to do all that I said. To live above. That's what the Zoe life is. That's what he gave to us. Zoe life. And you have it. You have the ability to live it now. This is what the abundant life is. Faith and reliance on God. The, the, the just existing life. The Boucher is outside of Christ. It's outside of him. In just existing there is no hope. In just existing, there is no peace. In just existing, there is no remaining joy. It's dependent upon things. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want us just to exist. He gave us life above just existing. He gave us more life. In the more life, there is hope. When storm comes, when storms come, we have hope. In the one who can calm the storm. Yeah. He gave us peace in the midst of chaos. He speaks peace. When we're suffering, he gives us joy. Could, could you, could you, under, could you, again, back to the, why they were able to endure the thing that they endured, how, how Peter and them found, were, were found joy in crucifixion, how can you be joy? They said John, the apostle, was boiled in a pile of oil before he was placed on the Isle of Patmos where God gave him revelations, the book of Revelation. 
How can they endure those things? Because they understood they had a life that was beyond. They were living dependent, dependent upon on what, on what, what life brought about. And I know we say that's the Bible, but it's still available to us today. Still, it's, it's still ours if we want it. What did the Bible say about Elijah when he, when he held back the rain and didn't cause it to rain? The Bible says he was a white man just like us. Why does it say that? So the people under, can understand that it's, it's the power of God is still available to you and me just like they had to live above. So the more life we find our identity in Christ, I'm almost done. The more life we find our identity in Christ, See, you're not what you were before him. You're not what the world says you are. You are free from guilt. You are free from shame. You are free from failure in him. Got to learn that. In him, we are whole. Ain't nothing missing in us. Yes. Help us, Lord. Ain't nothing missing in us. We are whole in him. We are complete. In him. Mm -hmm. Your shortcomings don't matter anymore. Not in Christ. And in the more life, you realize that God has a plan for you. Mm -hmm. You are valuable. God wants to do something through you. And I, and I, I, I intentionally, I touched on it a little bit, but I intentionally didn't focus on material things and financial things. We, we've heard people who say those things equate to you living life abundantly. But we saw what Peter said. He said, silver and gold, I didn't have. I don't got. That shows us that the abundant life is not dependent upon what I got or what I, what I, what I have. It's dependent, it's dependent upon who I have. It's not dependent upon what I have is dependent upon who I have. Why do I say that? Because God will provide for those who are his. He says, I, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. Yes. All of us here look like we're well taken care of. All of us here probably had times where we felt like we weren't going to make it. We all have the testimony that we made it. Yes. That shows us that God provides for those who are his. He does say that I've given you the power to get wealth. Mm -hmm. As sons and daughters, he's given us the ability yeah. to get wealth. But what that means is he will, he will teach us how to be good stewards of what he blesses us with. Mm -hmm. He will teach us how to, how to store our life and our resources well in a way that pleases him. But that's what the more life is. In God, I live beyond what I have in my bank account. Mm -hmm. Because he will make it so. Mm -hmm. He will provide for us. In the more life, we live faith in action. You share what God has done in your life. Because people need to see it. People need to hear it. Mm -hmm. That's why, that's, why God has, that's why God is doing it. He ain't doing it for you to keep it to yourself. He wants people to see that you have the ability to live above what's going on, and they don't. Mm -hmm. You give them your, the biblical wisdom that he gives to you, you share with them. Because you have this more life, this gives you the ability to serve people. You realize that you and I are the hands and feet of Jesus in this earth. That's who we are. We shine the hope of Jesus to a lost and darkened world. Why? Because we got more life. We have more than just the mundane existing in Jesus. This is what we're going to end with this. This is what the more life that is yours is. It is it's an eternal life when we get to heaven, but eternal life inside of us. That's what this more life is. You have eternal life 
in you. You have the life of the world to come in you right now. You have the Zoe life, the life that comes from above, the life to live beyond. You have the life of the super added things in you. You have everything. The world will make us think that we need constantly, 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 never satisfied. God said, I've given you everything that you need. We really have it. We have everything that we need to be blessed and happy. If we could only see it. We have the Zoe life, life in its fullness. We have sources for our life and for other people in you. We got spiritual blessings, the abundance of, of grace and peace and love in us. We have the ability to experience rest, refreshment and rejuvenation for our souls. Again, we got the rivers of living water, spiritual refreshment, large and liberal, constant blessings, fruit of the spirit being, 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 being provided or made in us. Flowing streams in us. We got refreshing, divine joy, divine peace in us. Coming from Jesus himself. We got righteousness, peace and joy. Listen to this. Without any kind of mental agony or fear. That's ours. We got resurrection life. Which is the motivating energy and directive agent of a new kind of life in us. More life. The elements and character of the Holy Spirit being developed in us and evidenced to everybody else in the unbelieving world. In you. We have an a inward rest that provides freedom from works, from cares, from anxieties. I'm trying to get us to see that we have this. We have more life. Jesus made it available to us to live a life that is not dependent upon whatever. That's why he came. To give us the ability to live beyond. I, I, I'm going to end, but this, I want you to understand. What what <sighs> what well, other translations say about this abundant life, and this will give us a clearer picture. The Amplified Bible, when it says that Jesus came to give us life and it more abundantly, it says he came to give us a life to the full, a life till it overflows. It says that Jesus came to give us a life of excess. When something is full, it's to the brim, right? But he came to give you a life that is overflowing, running over. What does that mean? Not live to the limits. Live beyond the limits of what they say. The, the contemporary English Bible, and it says that Jesus said, I came that they may have life indeed. Indeed, is an emphasis of yes. I came to live life. I came so that they can have life. Yes, so they can have life to the fullest. Full is holding as much as possible. But fullness is holding more than possible. Can you see that? What shall we see? We are not bound by circumstances, we are not bound even by our humanity. You can live, you can live behind it through Jesus. But this is what we do. We say, I'm just human. It's just me. We limit ourselves. 
And Jesus wants us to live beyond that. Yeah. We don't, most people don't act spiritual until they want to prove something to somebody. <laughs> you want to act spiritual in front of somebody else. But do you realize it doesn't matter what you do in front of anybody else? Who you are, the real you, is what you do when nobody's around. Who you are when nobody's around, how you act then. You got to live according to the standards of what Jesus says when nobody's around. You have the more life, not just on Sunday, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Every day. The White Cliff Bible says that Jesus said, I came to have life and that they may have it more plenteously. He wants them to have life beyond what we or what, what the world tries to say we need. He wants us to live life through him. Simplify. See, this, the more life isn't an especially long life, right? God will keep all of us as long as he wants us here. We're not supposed to live in fear of death because we got life in him. As long as we're here, we're here with a purpose. And as long as we're fulfilling that purpose, when that purpose is over, then God will take us away. We're not supposed to live life in fear. The abundant life doesn't mean that you got to live to 120. It means that I live trusting God. The, the, the more life isn't a life that made that is that is super easy or super comfortable. No, you got the ability to live above what's easy. The ability to live above what's comfortable. What is this life? It's a life of being satisfied in Jesus. The life of being content in Him. When I'm when I'm satisfied in Him and content in Him, that's when I have the ability to live abundantly. Because I, I I realize that He's with me. He's never forsake me. What I have the need of, He's going to supply. He will perfect those things that concern me. That's what the but that's what that's what's ours. So, as someone with more life, you're supposed to have stamina. As someone with more life, you're supposed to have energy, increased energy. If, 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 if people who don't have this life that Jesus provided can be energetic, Apostle Alice, <laughs> at the service, he said, it's amazing how people can go to a football game, people who don't know each other, yeah. and they scream and shout and celebrate a team that they have no control over, and really doesn't mean anything to their well-being. But us, with, with what's been made available to us, we sit. And don't celebrate what God has made available to us. If anybody should be energetic, who should it be? Those who have the more life. With, 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 as someone who has more life, our living sphere should be large. Not, not necessarily materially, I said that. But experientially, our life should be full. We got the ability to do things. Whatever you, that's what it go, when he said, go in and out and find pasture. In Jesus, you have the ability to live your dreams. As somebody with more life, we should have an overflowing of enjoyment. We have what it takes. To win. We need to know that. We have who it takes to win in this life. 
That makes sense, I'm done. But I'm gonna close with this real quick. Maybe this will make you understand that. Make it sense. In the same chapter, John 10, at verse 18, Jesus says, I laid down my life. Nobody takes it from me. I lay it down of my own accord. Many people think that Jesus just laid down his bios life, his physical life. But Jesus, this takes us back to what I said in the beginning, the, the bios, the pushe, and the zoe. Jesus laid down his bios life, his physical life, but he also laid down the pushe life. The life that separates from living according to God's purpose. And the life that he said he takes up was the Zoe life. He took, he laid down his physical life and he took that back up. Because he said that he went in the fire. He's going to come back one day. But he laid down the Pusha life, the life that separates from the eternal purposes of God. He laid that down and he left it there. And he took back up the Zoe life. And when he took back up the Zoe life, he made that life available to us. He made that life available to us. That's why we have the ability to live his life on the earth. Because what he picked up, he gave to us. Read Ephesians chapter 4. It tells us what Jesus did when he rose. What he sent to us. I'm aiming at this. You have the permission his permission to live the abundant life. You have his permission to live beyond feelings, circumstances, situations, people say what you have, what you don't have, this, that. You have the ability to live above that. Jesus gave us more life. You have the ability to live beyond just existing Beyond what happens. It's ours. We got to learn about what is ours. Amen. Amen. Hope I said something that, that aggravated you. <laughs> when I was studying this, I was getting aggravated. Because I realized what is mine. To anybody who does not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, anybody who's watching online, everything that I share is only applicable to you if you know Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, you don't have the ability to live beyond circumstances, beyond situations, beyond what's going on. But you can by making Jesus your Lord and Savior. If you want to be saved, ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. I want you to know that God loves you. He created you to know him personally. We in and of ourselves are separated from God. So you can't know him personally or experience his love in and of yourself. But God gave his son. Jesus as his only provision for our sin. Through him and through him alone we can know God personally and experience God's love. We must all individually receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord and then through him, we can know God personally and experience the love of God. So what I'm saying to you is this. You need to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. This is not something that you can put off until tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised to you. Your next minute is not promised to you. You must make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. So in doing that, please pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I confess my sins and I ask for your forgiveness. Please come into my heart as my Lord and Savior. Take complete control of my life and help me to walk in your footsteps daily by the power of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for answering my prayer. If you prayed that prayer, you are now saved and you now have the ability to live this more life. You are more God has put so much, so many things inside of you, so many things he wants to bring about through you. You are valuable to God, and we all need to know that. So I put it, I say something that encourages your heart, encourages your mind. You are not who this world says you are. You are not 
who your family says you are. You are more than little Pookie, more than little John John. You are who God says you are. Yes, yes. Amen. You are valuable. There are gifts and purposes. There are answers to questions. There are solutions to problems inside mm -hmm. of you. Allow God to bring them out. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for everything that's been said and done. I pray that I was able to <laughs> communicate what you gave to me. Yes, we trust that your Holy Spirit will continue to uh, deal with all of us and continue to make known what you have made available to us. But, Lord, I pray that we would live beyond the standards of this world and we would live according to your purpose and plan for our lives and that we would not allow anything to come against it. Yes. Bless your people. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we give praise to God? Amen. Amen. Welcome to the team. Amen. 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 So as we prepare our hearts for um, offering, ask us when we get that together. But I, I hope and pray that the word that was given on today that it helped you to make the necessary changes, the necessary steps that we need, amen, in order to survive, amen. Um, just see, take that change, that, just do it. Take that necessary step. I know we look at other people and say, well, they need to change. How about just start with you? I think about Michael Jackson's song, Man in the Mirror. He <laughs> said, you know, look at yourself, start with you. Um, and as things start changing within you, watch things around you start changing, because it's a lot of us as how we act, how, and when we say how we act, that's all of us, how we all act towards one another. But um, God will be in the midst. But preparing your hearts for the offering at this time, if you would like to give in person, which comes over here, you see that the envelopes are on the seat. We can give to the deacon at Donald Robinson, he'll collect um, the money as well. And then here at House for the Faith, we have ways that you can give. If you have cash app, you can give um, dollar sign H H O F C D E. If you want to give online, www.hhofcde.org slash give to H H O F C. And if you'd like to give by mail, you also can do that as well. Hospital of Faith Church, PO Box 300097, Women's in Delaware 19805. And at this time, we have an affirmation that we say which we're declaring and giving it back unto God when we give and why we give and what we want God to do. I don't know if Sister Desiree is participating today or not. If not, we'll move we'll, we'll, we'll on. So here is our offering declaration. This is what we say and believe and trust and know that God is going to do that. So as we receive today's offering, so if you have your money in your hand, your phone in your hand, however you're going to give, we're going to declare back unto God. As we receive today's offering, we are believing you for heaven open, earth invaded, storehouses unlocked, and miracles created, dreams and visions, angelic visitations, declarations, impartations, and divine manifestations, anointings, giftings, and callings, positions and promotions, provisions and resources. To go to the nations, souls, and more souls, from every generation saved and set free, carrying kingdom revelation. Thank you, Father, that as I turn my value system to yours, you will shower favor, blessing, and increase upon me, so I have more than enough to co-labor with heaven and see Jesus get his full reward. Hallelujah. So, Father, we thank you for those who were able to give on today. We actually you got the bless and give back. Um, 1,000 fold, 100 fold, however we want you to give back unto them. If it's not, it is not. Money for them, God. We actually got to bless God throughout the week, God. You know what it is that they need, what they desire, and what it is that they want. I ask you, God, you be in the midst, God. I ask you, God, to bless us all throughout on this week, Father Lord. I ask you, God, to have your way, God, as we do the necessary steps, God, to live for you, God, to live more and abundantly and beyond, God. What you have for us, God, we're going to uh, receive and take the benefits that you have for us, God. We're going to learn of you. We're going to apply, God, the word, God, into our lives and situation, God. And know that we are party winners, we are overcomers, we have the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I know the pastor wants to say something else before we close. No? So at this time, with all hearts, minds are clear, you are dismissed. And we'll see you guys next Sunday at the Loud Lords to see us here at 12 p.m. Bring some friends, some family, let them know we're here in the house at House of Church at 219 
North Market Street, Wilmington, Delaware, 19801. God bless.